Francisco Suarez was a Spanish Jesuit priest, philosopher and theologian, one of the leading figures of the School of Salamanca movement, and generally regarded among the greatest scholastics after Thomas Aquinas. His work is considered a turning point in the history of Second Scholasticism, marking the transition from its Renaissance to its Baroque phases. According to Christopher Shields and Daniel Schwartz, figures as distinct from one another in place, time, and philosophical orientation as Leibniz, Grotius, Puffendorf, Schopenhauer, and Heidegger, all found reason to cite him as a source of inspiration and influence, life and career. Francisco Suarez was born in Granada, Andalusia, on 5 January 1548. After three years of preliminary studies from age 10 onwards, in 1561 Suarez matriculated at the University of Salamanca and studied law. In 1564, at age 16, Suarez entered the Society of Jesus in Salamanca. In August 1566, Suarez took his first vows as a Jesuit. He then began in October 1566 to study theology at Salamanca. It seems he was not a promising student at first, in fact, he nearly gave up his matters of study after failing the entrance exam twice. After passing the exam at third attempt, though, things changed. In 1570, with the completion of his course, Suarez began to teach philosophy, first at Salamanca as a scholastic tutor, and then as a professor in the Jesuit College at Segovia. He was ordained in March 1572 in Segovia. He continued to teach philosophy in Segovia until, in September 1574, he moved to the Jesuit college in Valladolid to teach theology, a subject he would then teach for the rest of his life. He taught in a succession of different places, Avila, Segovia, Valladolid, Rome, Alcala and Salamanca. In 1597, he moved to Coimbra, some years after the accession of the Spanish House of Habsburg to the Portuguese throne, to take up the principal chair of theology at the University of Coimbra. He remained there, aside from a brief time teaching at Rome, until his death in 1617. He wrote on a wide variety of subjects, producing a vast amount of work. Suarez's writings include treatises on law, the relationship between church and state, metaphysics, and theology. He is considered the godfather of international law. His disputationus metaphysici were widely read in Europe during the 17th century and are considered by some scholars to be his most profound work. Suarez was regarded during his lifetime as being the greatest living philosopher and theologian, and given the nickname Dr. Eximius A. Pius, Pope Gregory XIII attended his first lecture in Rome. Pope Paul V invited him to refute the errors of James I of England, and wished to retain him near his person, to profit by his knowledge. Philip II of Spain sent him to the University of Coimbra in order to give it prestige, and when Suarez visited the University of Barcelona, the doctors of the university went out to meet him wearing the insignia of their faculties. After his death in Portugal his reputation grew still greater, and he had a direct influence on such leading philosophers as Hugo Grotius, René Descartes, John Norris, and Gottfried Leibniz. In 1679 Pope Innocent XI publicly condemned 65 casuist propositions, taken chiefly from the writings of Escobar, Suarez and others, mostly Jesuit theologians as propositionus laxorum moralis darum and forbade anyone to teach him under penalty of excommunication. Philosophical thought his most important philosophical achievements were in metaphysics and the philosophy of law. Suarez may be considered the last eminent representative of the scholasticism. He adhered to a moderate form of Thomism and developed metaphysics as a systematic inquiry. Metaphysics for Suarez, metaphysics was the science of real essences, it was mostly concerned with real being rather than conceptual being, and with immaterial rather than with material being. He held that essence and existence are the same in the case of God. 
but disagreed with Aquinas and others that the essence and existence of finite beings are really distinct. He argued that in fact they are merely conceptually distinct. Rather than being really separable, they can only logically be conceived as separate. His position is a little bit closer to nominalism than that of Thomas Aquinas. Sometimes he is classified as a moderate nominalist, but his admitting of objective precision ranks him with moderate realists. The only veritable and real unity in the world of existences is the individual, to assert that the universal exists separately ex parte re would be, to reduce individuals to mere accidents of one indivisible form. Suarez maintains that, though the humanity of Socrates does not differ from that of Plato, yet they do not constitute real eye to one and the same humanity, there are as many, formal unities, as there are individuals and these individuals do not constitute a factual, but only an essential or ideal unity. The formal unity, however, is not an arbitrary creation of the mind, but exists in the nature of the thing, prior, ontologically, to any operation of the intellect. His metaphysical work, giving a remarkable effort of systematization, is a real history of medieval thought combining the three schools available at that time, Thomism, Scotism and Nominalism. He is also a deep commentator of Arabic or high medieval works. He enjoyed the reputation of being the greatest metaphysician of his time. He thus founded a school of his own, Surism or Suarezianism, the chief characteristic principles of which are the principle of individuation by the proper concrete entity of beings the rejection of pure potentiality of matter, the singular as the object of direct intellectual cognition, a distinction rationis ratiocinator between the essence and the existence of created beings, the possibility of spiritual substance only numerically distinct from one another, ambition for the hypostatic union as the sin of the fallen angels, the incarnation of the word, even if Adam had not sinned, the solemnity of the vow only in ecclesiastical law, the system of congruism that modifies Molinism by the introduction of subjective circumstances, as well as of place and of time, propitious to the action of efficacious grace, and with predestination antiprevisa merita, the possibility of holding one and the same truth by both science and faith, the belief in divine authority contained in an act of faith, the production of the body and blood of Christ by transubstantiation as constituting the Eucharistic sacrifice, the final grace of the Blessed Virgin Mary superior to that of the angels and saints combined. Suarez made an important investigation of being, its properties and division in disputationist metaphysici, which influenced the further development of theology within Catholicism. In the second part of the book, Disputations 28-53, Suarez fixes the distinction between eens infinitum and eens finitum. The first division of being is that between eens infinitum and eens finitum. Instead of dividing being into infinite and finite, it can also be divided into eens ache and eens abalio, i.e., being that is from itself and being that is from another. A second distinction corresponding to this one, e ends necessarium and e ends contingens, i.e., necessary being and contingent being. Still another formulation of the distinction is between e ends per ascension and e ends per participation m, i.e., being that exists by reason of its essence and being that exists only by participation in a being that exists on its own. A further distinction is between e ends and creatum and e ends creatum, i.e., uncreated being and created, or creaturely, being. A final distinction is between being as actus purus and being as e ends potential, i.e., being as pure actuality and being as potential being. Suarez decided in favor of the first classification of the being into e ends infinitum and e ends finitum as the most fundamental, in connection with which he accords the other classifications their due. In the last disputation 54 Suarez deals with entia rationis, which are impossible intentional objects, i.e., objects that are created by our minds but cannot exist in actual reality. 
Theology and theology, Suarez attached himself to the doctrine of Louis Molina, the celebrated Jesuit professor of Evora. Molina tried to reconcile the doctrine of predestination with the freedom of the human will and the predestinarian teachings of the Dominicans by saying that the predestination is consequent upon God's foreknowledge of the free determination of man's will, which is therefore in no way affected by the fact of such predestination. Suarez endeavored to reconcile this view with the more orthodox doctrines of the efficacy of grace and special election, maintaining that, though all share in an absolutely sufficient grace, there is granted to the elect a grace which is so adapted to their peculiar dispositions and circumstances that they infallibly, though at the same time quite freely, yield themselves to its influence. This mediatizing system was known by the name of congruism, philosophy of law here. Suarez's main importance stems probably from his work on natural law, and from his arguments concerning positive law and the status of a monarch. In his extensive work, Tractatus de Legibus Act Dio Legislator, he is to some extent the precursor of Grotius and Puffendorf, in making an important distinction between natural law and international law, which he saw as based on custom. Though his method is throughout scholastic, he covers the same ground, and Grotius speaks of him with great respect. The fundamental position of the work is that all legislative as well as all paternal power is derived from God, and that the authority of every law resolves itself into his. Suarez denies the patriarchal theory of government and the divine right of kings founded upon it. Doctrines popular at that time in England and to some extent on a continent. He argued against the sort of social contract theory that became dominant among early modern political philosophers such as Thomas Hobbes and John Locke. But some of his thinking found echoes in the more liberal Locke and contract theorists. He argued that human beings have a social nature bestowed upon them by God, and this includes the potential to make laws. However, when a political society is formed, the authority of the state is not of divine bit of human origin, therefore, its nature is chosen by the people involved, and the natural legislative power is given to the ruler. Because they gave this power, they have the right to take it back and to revolt against a ruler, only if the ruler behaves badly towards them, and they must act moderately and justly. In particular, the people must refrain from killing the ruler, no matter how tyrannical he may have become. If a government is imposed on people, on the other hand, they have the right to defend themselves by revolting against it and even kill the tyrannical ruler. In 1613, at the instigation of Pope Paul V, Suarez wrote a treatise dedicated to the Christian princes of Europe, entitled Defensio Catholici Fide Contra Anglicani Sectareras. This was directed against the oath of allegiance which James I required from his subjects. James caused it to be burned by the common hangman and forbade its perusal under the severest penalties, complaining bitterly to Philip III of Spain for harboring in his dominions a declared enemy of the throne and majesty of kings. Influence The contributions of Suarez to metaphysics and theology exerted significant influence over 17th and 18th century scholastic theology among both Roman, Catholics and Protestants. Thanks in part to the strength of Suarez's Jesuit order, his disputationus metaphysici was widely taught in the Catholic schools of Spain, Portugal and Italy. It also spread from these schools to many Lutheran universities in Germany, where the texts were studied especially by those who favoured Melanchthon rather than Luther's attitude towards philosophy. In a number of 17th-century Lutheran universities the Disputationer served as a textbook in philosophy. In a similar way, Suarez had major influence in the reformed tradition of German and Dutch schools for both metaphysics and law, including international law. His work was highly praised, for example, by Hugo Grotius. His influence is evident in the writings of Bartholomaeus Keckerman, Clemens Timpler, Gilbertus Jacchius, Johann Heinrich Alsted, Antonius Warlius, and Johannes Macovius, among others.
This influence was so pervasive that by 1643 it provoked the Dutch Reformed theologian Jacobus Revius to publish his book Length Response, Suarez Repurgatis, the views of Suarez upon the human origin of political order, and his defense of tyrannicide emanating from popular dissent were heavily criticized by English philosopher Robert Filmer in his work Patriarcha, or The Natural Power of Kings. Filmer believed the Calvinists and the Papists like Suarez to be dangerous opponents of divine right monarchy, legitimized by the supremacy of fathers upon their offspring, which Filmer claimed could be traced back to Adam. Main works, Der Incarnationa, De Sacramentus, Disputationis Metaphysici, De Divina Substantia Erusca Tributish, De Divina Predestinationa e Reprobationa, De Sanctissimo Trinitatis Mysterio, De Religiona, De Legibus, De Gratia, De Angelus, De Opera Sex Diarum, De Anima, De Fide, Spea Charitit, De Ultimo Fine Hominis. In the 18th century, the Venice edition of Opera Omnia in 23 volumes in folio appeared, followed by the Parisian Vives edition. 26 volumes plus two volumes of indices. In 1965, the Vives edition of the Disputationis Metaphysici was reprinted by Georg Olms, Hildesheim. From 1597 to 1636, the Disputationis Metaphysici were published in 17 editions. No modern edition of Suarez's complete works is yet available, and only few of Suarez's disputations have been translated into English.